Hello friends, followers and channel members, welcome to another video here in Microsoft Flight Simulator and today we're in the Phoenix A320 where I'm going to be showing you what you need to look for and concentrate on when landing to try and achieve that perfect touchdown. Now before we go any further I want to quickly talk about what constitutes a good safe successful landing. So what I'd like you guys to do is very quickly just pause the video and list the top three things you think you need to achieve in order to have that perfect landing and if so try and get them in order of importance. Go ahead and do that now. Okay, so I'm going to bet that a few of you have put the uh, the landing rate, what the feet per minute was at touchdown, uh, center line, and of course the touchdown zone. Well, they're the main three things, the key things that we want to look for to get a nice safe touchdown. However, interestingly enough, the most important things are number one, be in the touchdown zone, number two, center line and the last one is the feet per minute the landing rate now on almost every live stream we do loads of people always call out at the last moment wanting as we're coming in on that final approach to butter the bread and get the smoothest touchdown possible remembering of course however that in real life the smoothest touchdown is not the safest touchdown you need to make positive contact with the ground that's not to say that you want to slam it down at say six seven hundred feet per minute you want to arrest the rate of descent and that's what the flare is for at the uh, last 30 feet but that is not the most important thing the most important important thing is the touchdown zone, the center line, and then of course if you can get a nice soft touchdown as well, well you'll please the passengers and the cabin crew. So you're joining us just for the final few stages of the landing that you can see here. This is actually an RNAV approach. Now it makes no difference. This video will apply to both RNAV approaches, ILS approaches, visual approaches, all approaches. All of the last thousand feet or so are to be treated exactly the same with the exception, of course, of uh, an auto land, for example. But of course, we're not doing that today. Ensuring the aircraft is prepared and stabilized for the approach is the first key in making sure you get a nice landing. By around 50 miles out, you'd want flaps 1. By the latest 2,000 feet RA, you want flaps 2. And then by 5, 6 miles out, that's when we want to get fully configured with our landing gear down and flaps 3, followed swiftly by flaps full. Now, of course, this is just an overall guide. Every approach is slightly different, but the absolute key is making sure that by 1,000 feet that you are fully configured. And that means flaps full or flaps three if you're doing a flap three landing and landing gear down. Usually the autopilot will, of course, be in at this point if you're on an RNAV or an ILS landing. So when do we disengage the autopilot? Well, that is entirely up to you. If you've got good weather and you're happy, then I normally disengage the autopilot at around 1,000 feet to go. But if it's a little bit windy or maybe you haven't got visual with the runway yet, even though you're doing a cat one, sometimes that can be as late as two, 300 feet. And you don't want to obviously disengage the autopilot if you can't see where you're headed. Thankfully, this landing today, as you can see, the weather is good, but we do have quite a strong headwind, so we may feel that on the final approach. The best advice I was ever given for landing successfully, ticking all those three boxes, is very very simple and that is look out of the window it's very easy to become fixated on the instruments down in front making sure we're bang on the glide slope bang on the localizer when essentially all you need to do is just look up and if you have that good weather you can see the runway you know where you want to aim it for and of course you can judge how we're doing you've also got things like pappies to help as well once I disengage the autopilot, it's also very easy to think, right, I need to be very hands-on here, take control. But the fly-by-wire technology of the Airbus is, of course, kind of a point-and-shoot motion, which means most of the time when you disengage that autopilot, your aircraft is not going to veer off in one direction or the other because it's nicely configured. You will only need very, very slight minor inputs, if any at all. If you're flying on a perfectly clear day with no winds, then you'll notice that you won't even need to touch the side stick, maybe one or two minor corrections. But realistically, the aircraft is configured and pointing already towards the runway at the correct rate of descent. It's very easy to think that, right, autopilot's off, I have control, I must drive this aircraft, but actually you don't need to do too much. And if you do, then 
overcorrecting things which perhaps don't really need correcting is a easy mistake to make. We can just start to see that headwind I uh, mentioned a bit ago coming into play here with a little bit of the winds coming in off the terrain. So the aircraft's wobbling a little left and right but it's still stabilised and the autopilot for the moment is still on. So, the technique for the landing as soon as I've taken that autopilot off. So, we disengage the autopilot and then immediately I am looking straight out the window, looking at the pappies and focusing on that touchdown zone. The problem with a desktop flight simulator and a 2D screen is you get a bit of a false perspective. You want to drive the aircraft down towards that touchdown zone, but when you look at your screen, you'll probably think that you're pointing the aircraft literally at a nose down attitude. That's not the case, however. This, as you can see here on the screen, looks like our aircraft is pointed nose down. But in actual fact, it's not. If you take a look at the primary flight display, we're actually at a nose up attitude of around two and a half degrees. This being a flight simulator, of course, we can also cheat and have a quick look outside. And there's confirmation that we are pointed nose up, even though the inside internal view might give you a false perspective that you are looking nose down. This becomes really useful to remember when you're just a few feet from touching down and you start the flare. You don't need to flare too much because your aircraft, remember, is already pitched nose up. And so if you believe the picture that you're seeing, that you think you're nose down, that causes people to just want to pull back on that side stick far too much. And that is when we float and we don't make contact with the runway. What you need to try and imagine from here on in is locate that touchdown zone and literally try and steer your aircraft and drive it down towards it. Now, this of course seems a little bit strange to say this, but you want to imagine that that touchdown zone is going to come straight through your window. With that, of course, always try and maintain that center line. You can see me struggling with some of those winds here just to get that back on track. So there it is. Once we get to around two, 300 feet, try not to look at the pappies too much and just accept the picture that you've got. And the pappies do become less reliable the closer you get to them. Once we hear the 30 foot call out, then start that flare. Only a little bit and you can then cut the thrust. It's important not to cut the thrust until after you've started the flare. Hold the side stick back in the flare. Don't be tempted to release it back to its neutral position and certainly don't push forward. This is because from around 30 feet, the aircraft starts pointing the nose down automatically, which means that you as the pilot has that natural instinct to pull back on the side stick. So hold it there, leave it there, resist that temptation to do anything with it and let the aircraft just settle nicely on the runway. If everything goes well, you'll then get a nice smooth touchdown and take all of the three boxes. Flight simulators, of course, we can use the instant replay just to see how that is. So you can see we're not flaring at the moment and the flare starts around there. Notice that actually there's very little pitch up from the nose. It's just a slight pullback on that side stick to hold it in place. We land within the touchdown zone, and not too far off the center line. So pretty happy with that. Just try to remember the three things. You need to get the touchdown zone in, center line, and then if you can get a nice smooth touchdown, that's great as well. This is achieved by initiating the flare at around 30 feet and then cutting the thrust back to idle. I hope you found this quick tutorial video useful. If you do have any questions, then please do leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to come back and answer those questions for you. If you have found this video useful, please do leave a like. And of course, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell so you don't miss any future videos and live streams. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you all again very soon. Bye bye for now.